welcome back everyone to the channel. It's me, Alejandro Mendoza, or the Nerd Gigano. Either way, how you say it, it's all good here. And we're back again for another review of a movie in my personal movie collection. And today, I decided let's go ahead and let's do something a bit different around here. We've talked about 4K titles and Blu-ray titles from the Criterion Collection, Arrow Video, and Screen Factory, but Let's go ahead and look at a Blu-ray title from Shout Select today as we talk about David Lynch's Wild at Heart. Of course, before we go ahead and get into this, I do want to thank my wonderful friend Rachel, aka The Lucky Peach. They're the reason that I even have this. I got this as a gift back on my birthday in um, actually this year. And I was gifted this, and I'm really thankful for them. And I just want to go ahead and give them a special shout out here. Make sure you follow them at The Lucky Peach on everything. So thank you, Rachel, for making this review possible. If you like content like this or anything pertaining to physical media, make sure you stick around here and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. When you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single piece of content that drops on the channel and leave a like on this video. If you want to lend us a helping hand here, go to patreon.com slash energicano and get access to some exclusives and early access to videos just like this one. But enough of that, let's go ahead and get into today's video. So this title is from Shout Select. Of course, it is all under the, Scream Fa the Shout Factory uh, boutique label like my following 4K was. But let's go ahead and read this introduction from Shout Factory and then we'll take a look at the packaging. This whole world's wild at heart and weird on top. Lula Fortune. Virtuoso filmmaker David Lynch, known for Twin Peaks and Blue Velvet, brings his singular vision to the screen once more with Wild at Heart, an incendiary tale of love violence and snakeskin jackets adapted from the novel by barry Gr gifford wild at heart stars nicholas cage known for leaving las vegas and adaptation and laura dern known for inland empire jurassic and jurassic park as sailor and lula a pair of young lovers on the run from lula's mother marietta da dern's real life mother diane ladd in an Academy Award nominated role. Sailor and Lula's journey takes them into the dark heart of America where dangers and temptations lurk and where only their love can truly protect them. But even their all consuming passion may not withstand the sinister presence of Bobby Peru, played by Willem Dafoe, in an unforgettable performance. So, this edition from Shout Factory includes a 1080p high definition widescreen uh, at 235 by 1 aspect ratio and a English DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 on stereo. And some bonus features you have in here is a new interview with novelist Barry Gifford, extended and deleted scenes that are roughly 76 minutes. Love, Death, Elvis, and Oz, The Making of Wild at Heart. Dell's Lunch Counter Extended Interviews, Specific Spontaneity, Focus on David Lynch, Lynch on the DVD Process, Original 1990 Making of EPK, Original Theatrical Trailer, TV Spots, and an Image Gallery. There's one disc in this set, it is Region A Locked, and it is 2 hours and 24 minutes long. So let's go ahead and look at the packaging here. It is going to be a little difficult because of the glare, but let me just go ahead and get this right there. All right, cool. This is the front of the Blu-ray. This is the back of the Blu-ray. This is the spine. Of course, Shout Select does have spine numbers, so this is spine number 46 in Shout Select. So you open it up and you have reversible artwork. Let me show you all what that looks like. Um, I wanna keep the, the artwork I have right now because honestly I like this one, but this is the reversible. So it would be the original poster look of it. It looks pretty cool, but I am a fan of this 
artwork more. But uh, put that aside there. You have your Blu-ray disc right here. And that's pretty much it, y'all. That's all you get in this edition from Shot Select. If you know me, you know that I am a fan of David Lynch. I love his film, Mulholland Drive, which is my favorite film of his. I love Eraserhead. I've also seen Rabbits, his sh video shorts, his um, other short film, What Did Jack Do? I believe is the name of that one, the one with the monkey on Netflix. And of course I am, and of course I have put myself through the painful experience of watching Dune 1984 that I actually have reviewed on this channel before. So I was excited to get to this and I know that Rachel gave me this film because they know that I love David Lynch. So I just want to keep exploring the films of David Lynch. Plus this is the film that got Nicolas Cage's Oscar and this is the film that got David Lynch his Palme d'Or. Which, um, which I was unaware of until I actually researched a bit of this film. And I was surprised because I don't think that this is the type of film that would win a Palme d'Or. But congrats to David Lynch because this was definitely an experience. I'm not sure if I totally understand what David Lynch is trying to say within Wild at Heart. Which is also not out of the ordinary for David Lynch. David Lynch is a director and an artist who very much works outside the box and he is always trying to engage his audience into discussing his films without a proper answer to their question. All I know is that I did enjoy my time watching this movie and I was very impressed with things like the cinematography, the performances, and a lot of the musical choices that David Lynch includes within this film. Of course, if you know the filmography of David Lynch, you know that he loves including music that he himself loves and adores. And something that caught my eye was a lot of oldies that David Lynch includes here, but also contrasting them with some speed metal and other tunes that I did not expect to hear in this film. I love the dynamic that Laura Dern and Nicolas Cage have in this film. Their chemistry radiates through the screen and you can really tell that both of them are completely understanding every ounce of direction that David Lynch is giving them. I love the bad boy character that Nicolas Cage plays in this film and I love the naive bad girl that Laura Dern plays in this film as well. Um, I was not expecting uh, Willem Dafoe to be in this film and nor was I expecting him to play the character he played but this just goes to show the versatility within Willem Dafoe's repertoire. Uh, the only thing I can say is that its pacing really went on much more than it needed to. I felt that the second act dragged so much that it was hard to uh, comprehend a lot of what was going on. But when David Lynch also seems to slow down, he provides some of his best work within his frames and the information within those frames. I love the use of red lights within this film and bright, beautiful neon lights that are found within the beautiful cinematography in this film. I found myself also engulfed into this film and its story about lovers who pretty much just want to be on their own and nobody else wants them together but they seem to be the only ones concerned with being together and even though Nicolas Cage's character is down the wrong path and really does realize at the end how badly he's fucked up he still manages to become a redeeming character within this film and I think that his performance is one of the biggest strengths in this film and how much he's able to convince you that to give him a second chance because in the end all he's ever wanted is just to live and to be with somebody he loves and to make sure that that person is taken care of and is protected. Of course like I said um, a lot of this movie still doesn't feel as strong and concretely put together like a Mulholland Drive or an Eraserhead. It's funny that I'm using even those words to describe how I feel about those films because they're not the most structured films in his filmography yet they're 
just better than this one but i did enjoy this movie a lot and i really did find it to be a pleasant experience within the filmography of probably one of the most unique filmmakers in the united states so while i like this transfer I don't think that this is restored. I'm pretty sure that this is just a port of a later Blu-ray presented in a collector's edition with so many special features that I'm sure is the big selling point of this film. But nonetheless, I like the way that this looks on my 4K TV. And I've got to say that with a proper restoration done to this film, you can really get some beautiful visuals out of this film. I love the way that the reds and yellows and oranges looked within this film. I just thought that maybe there should be a restorative process done to this film where you're able to get a better resolution and a better look at some of the information in the frame because sometimes the grain was overtaking that. I get that that's possibly how it's supposed to be and that's how it was shot but I think with a proper restoration done to the video quality we can really get a better look out of this movie even though right now it does look pretty good the audio though I've got to say I have no complaints on the audio I really like the way that this DTS HD master audio sounds of course I don't have surround sound I only have my TV but I was really um surprised by the way that the audio sounds it's no nowhere near being um, distracting there's no hissing there's no popping there's uh, balance in the dialogue and the music there are points in there where the music is a little too loud and I had to put down the volume and then you heard the dialogue a little too low but that's mostly in the beginning and then after that it pretty much goes away everything is pretty much fine by all means but I think that the biggest thing that they can do to this film following up to this is just to give it a proper restoration and as we've seen Lost Highway and Inland Empire are getting Criterion editions so it's not out of the realm of possibilities for us to finally restore a lot of these other David Lynch films that have pretty much not been given a proper restorative treatment. Nonetheless, I like the way that Wild at Heart looks on my TV and I like this movie, so I'm just thankful to have it. So um, if you all do want to buy this, it is available online for $23.99 on Shout Factory's website, or you can probably get it on Amazon and other retailers like that. But Overall, I like this film. I don't think it's great. I don't think it's amazing, but it is a really good inclusion inside of uh, David Lynch's filmography. To connect with me on social media, make sure you follow me at The Nerdy Chicano on everything. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, Litterbox, and Serialized. Remember y'all, if you follow me, I'm always going to follow back. If you want to follow up with all the things that we do on The Nerdcore, you can visit our website, thenerdcore.com, and you follow us on Twitch and on YouTube at The Nerd Core. It's the same handle on both of those, so it's pretty easy to find, y'all. We'll go ahead and look at another film next week, but in the meantime, I hope you all had a wonderful time watching this video. I know I did have a wonderful time talking to this with y'all. In the comments, make sure you tell me what's your favorite David Lynch film, what do you think about Wild at Heart, and do you own a Shout Select title from their catalog? But in the meantime, to my wonderful cinephiles and renowned scholars, celebrate the love of cinema today, tomorrow, and every day after. Catch you all in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.